Hello, and thank you for joining me. For those people that this may be the first video of mine that you've ever watched, my name is Laverne, and I welcome you to my channel and to my videos. In this video and the one to follow, I'm going to be looking at some of the do's and don'ts that a Christian should be aware of in preparing themselves and their family for the period known as the Great Tribulation. For I believe we are on the cusp of that time period. Now, unlike many Christians, I do not believe in the pre-trib rapture. I believe Christians are going to be tested during this time period. That God will give us the strength to live through this period of trouble. So I'm going to be discussing some don'ts in this video. And the one to follow, I will be looking at some things that we should be doing. I have split it up in this way because there really is quite a bit to cover. I'm going to be discussing some things that are being taught by other Christians, but things that you should be aware of, that you might want to think about this twice if you believe in these teachings. Now, for the pre turber there are some who are teaching in their videos that something the Christian can do is to help those who are going to be left behind and they can help them by preparing their home for those people who are going to enter the home following the pre-trip rapture. There are some Christians teaching that you should have Bibles laid out throughout the home and open to passages pertaining to the so-called pre-trip rapture. These Christians say that you should also have a couple letters laid out in the home for those people who might enter the home after the pre-trib rapture and these letters would explain why their family is not to be found, why they are missing according to the thinking of many people after the pre-trib rapture. They say that you should explain in detail what the pre-trib rapture is so that unbelievers will then have a much better chance of becoming believers and understanding what has just taken place. Well, I believe this is foolhardy. And for those Christians that are doing this, when they end up having to go through the pre-trib rapture, and when they realize the pre-trib rapture teaching is a lie, well, it's very possible that these letters and the Bibles that they have laid out will be reminders of this false teaching. And it may actually cause some to stumble and lose their faith. So I believe it's a dangerous instruction teaching people to do these things for these daily reminders. If they have these Bibles laid out and these letters uh, spread out throughout the home, perhaps attached to the fridge or laying on the dresser beside their bed, these will be daily reminders. And after several years, after even just one year of living through this troubling time, these Christians may lose their faith. For if they were wrong about the preacher of rapture, they will begin to question other things. Perhaps they were wrong about many other end-time prophecies. And perhaps they will come to taking the mark of the beast because they don't believe they can out -sin God's grace and because they begin to believe the teachings of the Antichrist who will really be a counterfeit Christ. So, while it may not seem like a dangerous teaching or that there can be any negative effects or consequences uh, to doing these things, I believe there are and will be serious consequences for doing them and serious consequences for believing in the pre-trib rapture. This will be especially dangerous for the person who believes that they also cannot out -sin God's grace, that they believe in once saved, always saved, that salvation is by faith alone and that there is nothing they can do to lose their salvation. 
if they believe in both the pre-trib rapture and the teachings I just described, well then, they will be very susceptible to the false teachings of the counterfeit Christ and the false prophet. And in all likelihood, they will end up taking the mark of the beast. Because even taking the mark of the beast will be viewed as a sin that cannot separate them from God. That because they are a born-again Christian, because they've said a sinner's prayer, being water baptized, then there is nothing else they need to do, and there is nothing that they can do to lose their salvation or separate themselves from God. Well, these are teachings that are going to become a stumbling block when the counterfeit Christ and the false prophet come on the scene, when the beast system is in place. So the prosperity gospel and the hyper grace teachings that are found in many of these seeker friendly churches will be stumbling blocks for many Christians. So, what else is there that you can do or should not be doing? Well, for those Christians who are teaching that we should be taking steps to ensure that we can live in the wilderness. Well, this is a, a, another teaching, I believe, that will have some serious consequences for the people trying to do this. There are those Christians who believe that they are doing the Lord's work by giving survival uh, techniques, by teaching survival techniques that will allow you to live in the wilderness. Well, is this really something that is taught in Scripture and something that a Christian should be preparing to do? If we are to live through the period of the Great Tribulation, if the church is going to be tested, do you really think that God would then want you as a Christian to go and live in the wilderness by yourself? I don't believe this is the case. For Jesus told us we are not to be a light that is placed under a bushel. We are not to place a bushel over the light. For how then can you be a light to others? How can you edify and support your brothers and sisters in Christ if you have separated yourself and gone to live in a cave or some shelter that you've built in the wilderness. Now, while the Christians doing this are doing it with a good heart, they believe they are doing the Lord's work and helping people to be able to survive the Great Tribulation. As a Christian, we are not just supposed to survive the tribulation period. No, we are to be a light for others, not only for our brothers and sisters in Christ, but for unbelievers as well. How are you going to touch and bring to Christ unbelievers if you are living in a cave in the wilderness? No, we are not called to do this. We are called to be a light unto the world. And what better time to do this than during the darkest period of mankind's history. For the Great Tribulation will be the darkest period that mankind has ever had to endure. So don't take steps that will allow you to hide from the world. Rather be in the world, but be not of the world. This is what the Christian who will be living through the period of the Great Tribulation will be called to do. Now, what about uh, stocking up? What about stockpiling provisions? There are many Christians teaching that this is what you need to do. There are many television programs and YouTube channels that are selling such provisions. For example, Jim Baker and Alex Jones both are selling products that supposedly are going to help you get through the period of the Great Tribulation. Now what's odd is that 
uh, at least in the case of Jim Baker, many of his guests also teach the pre-trib rapture. So they are telling people that the church is going to be raptured, but then they are also telling people who are part of the church that they should stockpile provisions by three or five years worth of provisions that will allow you to live through the great tribulation so that you will not have to take the mark of the beast. Well, while this may sound good on the surface, again, we have to look to scripture for Jesus tells us by way of a parable that we are not to store up uh, our wealth or food and provisions. He, he tells the story of the rich man who put his faith in his storehouses, but then he ended up dying and not enjoying the things that he stored up. The warning to us is that we are not to put our faith in the things that we store up. So that's one warning I would like to suggest to you. Now, this doesn't mean we have to be stupid about it. No, if it makes you feel better, then by all means, go ahead. If you want to store up some dehydrated food and water and put that uh, away someplace where you think it's going to give you some comfort, then go ahead and do it. But my warning to you is to be careful about where you are purchasing these products from. Because I'd like you to think about what you would do if you were part of the New World Order, if you were part of the government system, or you were part and parcel of the beast system. Do you not think that one of the things you would do is concentrate and focus your attention on those Christians that were preparing for the Great Tribulation? I know if I was part of the New World Order, if I was part of the government system, and I was hunting people that I believed were heretics or worse, terrorists, then what I would do is focus on those uh, Christian YouTube channels and those TV programs that were selling these products to other Christians. Because if someone is buying from Jim Baker or Alex Jones, then there's a very good chance that they are Christians who were preparing for the Great Tribulation, which are the very people that the dragon is going to come against. So if I was part of the New World Order, I would go to people like Jim Baker and Alex Jones, and I would line them along with their spouses and anyone who was part of their programming, I would line them up against a wall. And I would put a gun to the head of Jim Baker and Alex Jones, and I would say, give us the list of people that you sold your product to. Who all did you sell three years worth of produce to? Now, imagine the best case scenario. Imagine that Jim Baker and Alex Jones are both true blue Christians, that they refuse to give up the list. Well, if I was the government official, I would walk up to them, point a gun at them, and put a bullet between their eyes. Then I would go down the line, I would go to their spouse, and if their spouse refused to give up the information, I would then go on down the line. And I tell you, eventually someone would give up that list. But let's uh, imagine the best case scenario. Nobody gives up the list. No one involved with the Alex Jones channel or the Jim Baker channel will give up the list. They're all true Christians and they become martyrs. Well, how long do you think it will be before some government agent, before some government worker will be able to hack their computers and get that list anyway? And when they go down the list, if you've ordered from them, if you bought three years worth of food and water from these people, how long will it be before a government agent is knocking on the door of you and your family? 
Think about this. Does it not make sense if you want to prepare yourself with uh, food that you are going to store up? Does it not make sense to purchase it through in, uh, an agent other than a Christian program? I believe it does. So don't think for a moment that you are doing yourself or, for your, or your family a favor by ordering from places such as Alex Jones or Jim Baker. If you are going to store up food, ensure that you are not doing it through some Christian program. Protect yourself and your family. A better way would be to buy whatever it is that is needed to make your own dehydrated food. This way, there will be no paper trail leading back to you. There will be no trail that government agents will be able to use to hunt you down, at least not in this area. All right, that's several of the don'ts that I wanted to discuss. In part two, I'm going to be looking at some of the things that you should be doing. I'm going to be looking at scripture. I'm going to be looking at some non-canonical writings that we can turn to for inspiration. And we can begin putting into practice the things that those Christians who were willing to be martyred, we need to look at how they lived their life, what they believed, and then try to copy them, try to imitate the martyrs of old. But we first must have an understanding of what it is that they believed and how they lived their life so that they were able to face death and not give in to temptation, not give in to the sin of renouncing Christ. Or, for example, in the first century, giving up the inspired word of God to the hedonistic and pagan Romans. There were many Christians who refused to give up the uh, to give up certain writings and they refused to denounce Christ. They refused to, you know, say that the Roman emperor was a god himself. They refused to submit to the demands that were placed on them. And these are the people that we should turn to for inspiration so that when we are told that we must take the mark of the beast, that we will not do so, that we will be able to stand firm in our faith. And don't think that if you are living during a time of prosperity, in a time of abundance, or in a, a nation of abundance, that without question you are going to have that kind of faith. Because until you are tested, if you are not living today in accordance to God's commandments, if you think that you have a license to sin, then there's a very good chance you will end up taking the mark of the beast. All right, as always, I look forward to comments and messages. What are some of the things that you believe Christians should be refraining from? Some of the things that they should not be doing today so that they will be better prepared tomorrow when we have to go through the Great Tribulation? And what are some of the things that you think we should be doing. Till next time, peace and blessings.